Well, hello everyone. Welcome. I certainly had a uh, hell of a time getting here on time. I hope all of you became nice, prepared, and early, unlike me. Uh, so thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and to my presentation. Uh, my name is Adrian. Today we're going to be talking about uh, how Gutenberg is about to democratize the world of digital marketing, as well as what Gutenberg actually means for the rest of the WordPress community as far as uh, software goes, or creating your WordPress website, theme builders, all of that good stuff. So just a couple quick questions. Uh, how many de WordPress developers, theme developers, plugin developers do we actually have in the room today? Just by a show of hands, please. OK, a few. And how, uh, how, one, or how many of you would identify yourself as content creators? So a lot of you. All right, so a lot of you are here to learn about how you can make your content more inclusive, at least, or how to use Gutenberg in terms of creating awesome content. A few of you are here to learn how you can make your plugins more adaptable as far as Gutenberg is concerned. Is that about right? Yeah, some shaking hands, perfect. So today, during the presentation, we're going to talk about software as a service. Uh, versus WordPress. So how Gutenberg is actually adapting to the software as a service world uh, as far as uh, the massive improvements in web technology that we've experienced in the last 13 years. Uh, and Search results. Position zero. Press. These are at those changes as the SaaS user base continues to grow more year over year versus the WordPress user base. Second of all, we're going to talk about how Gutenberg is actually the wake-up call that, that we needed. A lot of people, or if you look at a lot of the views on at least the WordPress reviews page for the Gutenberg plugin, about half of them are not so great. Uh, but it's actually a really, really good thing because Gutenberg is, is, is or the reason that uh, there are so many negative reviews is that none of us like change, especially as developers. We love to get into a routine. Or as content creators, we like the tools that we like to use. And now that they're changing the landscape, we're all very, or a lot of us, are extremely resistant to that. Uh, but change is always for the better that I've experienced. So we're going to talk about how this change is going to make the access community stronger and in an increasingly competitive landscape for software domination. Finally, we're going to talk about whether you are a content creator or you are a developer, how you can flourish with your product or services in we'll the era of Gutenberg. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks, uh, at least from uh, my personal experiences as a developer, um, but a lot of that can also translate to content development as well. So before we get started in all of that, is it okay if I tell you a little bit about myself? Please do. Fantastic. So uh, I went to University of Toronto, uh, studied computer science uh, for several years until I dropped out <laughs> just recently in order to pursue my passion of the WordPress community and developing plugins uh, for people just like uh, yourselves. Uh, I'm currently in the process of developing a plugin called Groundhog. Uh, just getting that off the ground we about two months ago, and we're seeing some great user feedback from a lot of our uh, users. It is a marketing automation plugin uh, for sending emails. Uh, so it really expands the WordPress interface to bundle in all of your marketing that would traditionally belong to a SaaS model that you'd have to pay a monthly subscription fee. And we just thought that really sucks, so we made one for WordPress. Uh, in addition to that, I also have a company called Formlift, uh, which is a form builder plugin for WordPress as well. It's about a about thousand users. It's doing all right. Uh, so that's what I've been up to uh, since dropping out of university, which may or may not have been a great idea. We'll see how these turn out. And today, well, I'm really focused on uh, not necessarily, um, I'm not in it for the money at all. I'm just in it here to help people, to help uh, WordPress users, and help business owners, and help uh, solopreneurs and entrepreneurs uh, accomplish. And I'm going to be doing that, uh, focusing on the Groundhog CRM just for people like yourselves. So uh, is it OK if I set a little bit of uh, a few rules for the presentation today? Is that OK with you guys? Yep. Yeah? yeah? All right, so number one is energy. It's already up there on the board. So uh, can everybody stand up? Thank you. <laughs> We're just going to change the energy a level in here. We've sat probably through a few presentations today, uh, so it's nice to just change it up a little bit. So everybody, put your hands above your head. Thank you. Just give it a little lean to the left. Give it a little lean to the right. All right, take a step back and just let it go like that. 
<laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a seat. So can we all agree to participate at an energy level of 10? Say aye. Aye. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, number, rule number two is participation. Uh, a few times throughout this presentation, I'm going to be asking you to participate. I'd highly appreciate uh, if I asked you to raise your hand or I asked you to shout an answer that, that you do so. So can we all get an agreement uh, to participate? Say aye. Aye. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, number three is, uh, I'm going to be sharing you some tips and tricks, so just as long as you're in this room, you can totally forget anything you say as, as soon as you leave, but as long as you're in this room, can we all accept to at least take a little bit of guidance? Say aye. aye. Thank you. Okay, so number one, let's, let's, let's target uh, SAS versus WordPress. So Gutenberg uh, is addressing a problem that, that the WordPress community, at least... Awesome. Uh, has people all into in the last kind of few years and technology development. Uh, a lot of the SaaS programs are offering uh, extreme benefits over WordPress as far as usability, customer experience, speed, uh, and a few other things. And I'm just going to address those. So in the last 13 years, WordPress has come into clash in some key areas, content building, page building, e-commerce with companies like Shopify, ClickFunnels, and Weebly, uh, which are all doing very, very well in the face of what we all probably would understand to be a far superior content management system uh, compared to some of these others. But they're all extremely popular and all doing extremely well. And the question is, why? So I'm going to go there. WooCommerce versus Shopify as an example, and kind of just to add a little bit of context in how we know a lot of these programs are doing, or a lot of these platforms are doing very well is uh, this is taken from Built With. Uh, you are more than welcome to go look at these stats yourself. Uh, it's builtwith.com. You can go check out all of your competitors uh, and uh, any other websites and use, see what their tech stack is. You can check out how many people are using your plugin or your theme builder if it's big enough on Built With. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, so the big number there is WooCommerce currently has 2.9 million live websites. Uh, it's a little bit of a discrepancy between that and WordPress.org. Uh, but I'm just using the built with for the sake of transparency. Uh, versus Shopify, which came out uh, five years earlier. So WooCommerce came out in 2011. And uh, Shopify came out in 2006. And it has just under 2 million uh, live websites with 1.86 million live websites. And the big difference there is WooCommerce is an $11 million a year company. Shopify is an uh, $800 million a year company. So why is that when WooCommerce is a free platform that most people should be able to use fairly easily? It's on WooCommerce. It takes nothing as far as hosting costs uh, versus Shopify, which as soon as you sign up after your 14-day free trial, it's $297 US per month. $297 for, any, for, for their medium package. Right, so not their basic package, which is $99, but $297 US per month for the reporting and the stuff that you're actually going to need if you run a semi-legitimate business. Okay? So, and we can see that I have here, this is the top 100,000 sites, and these are the growth charts. So WooCommerce at the top there, and, and Shopify is listed. And we can see that the, the WooCommerce one, uh, near to today's date is kind of leveling off, and we can see that the, the, the growth chart for Shopify is significantly more in the top 100,000 users of sites, uh, ranked by Alexa. This is from Amazon. Um, that Shopify is actually getting you know, a, a larger growth number per, uh, per annum than WooCommerce is, uh, which out of the gate had a massive growth rate. So they were able to amass several million users within the first year of being out. But as the internet or as technology progresses, we can see that Shopify is actually starting to gain more traction as far as year-over-year -year user acquisition is concerned. And the question is, why is that? Why is something that's obviously free and something that is obviously you know, built for the betterment of humanity and open source and has a massive developer community and all the things, you know, losing out year-over-year -year to a company which is charged for everything, is closed source, uh, has arguably a, a less sophisticated developer community and, and all of these things, and an extremely volatile stock, if any of you are day traders. <laughs> um, and the answer is, to that question, user experience. Shopify has developed an incredible user experience uh, over their uh, 12 years of being in business. 
They've developed some incredible software that is extremely easy to use, uh, while WooCommerce uh, has become, well, not necessarily outdated. And we're actually expecting a big update from WooCommerce after 5.0 is released, uh, which is going to be really exciting in terms of reporting and stuff. Uh, but they've just developed such a massive uh, uh, understanding of what their users are expecting in terms of an e-commerce site. And I have two screenshots here. I have WooCommerce on the bottom. Elements, but don't let go of it. Once you're there, you can continue to push it. All right. And why do you lines? We can see some sales, and you know that's all well and good. As soon as we look at the Shopify one, it's boom, first name here. You know, today your site made X amount of dollars. You have currently 57 on store visits, and all of these things, and all of these stats for immediate consumption as soon as you log in. You don't get that with Google Commerce. You don't get that personalized experience. You don't get nearly uh, that level of reporting, right? So it, it's all about. You know, as soon as you log in, what what do you expect from your distributors or your uh, yeah distributors is a good word there. <laughs> uh, best company to book a vacation with. So, given that customer experience is the be all and end all of the success of of platforms these days, Shopify has incredible user experience from creating a product takes seconds, you know, you upload your pictures, they optimize it automatically, they crop it automatically, you just put in your price and they'll generate the rest. It's all automatic. The page doesn't even reload as soon as you add a product. As soon as you log in and get a beautiful welcome message, it's like, hey, Adrian, you know, today you made X amount of dollars. In order to make more, you should try out this other platform that we can upsell you to so you can understand more what your customers are doing so that way you can make more money and they have built-in upsells and all these things that just create a beautiful tied-in experience as for, for your e-commerce. Now, WooCommerce doesn't do that. And a lot of plugins that WordPress offers don't do that. But a lot of SaaS industries and a lot of SaaS models do do that. Uh, if anybody uses MailChimp or if anybody uses Constant Contact or any of the big marketing automation platforms, as soon as you log in, it's like, all right, here are your reports. You sent this many emails. You made this many dollars. Uh, you got this many link clicks. And here's how you can improve all of those. Take this training uh, for $199 or in, uh, install this plugin or this add-on and get this reporting so that you can do or view so much more reports so you can use that data to better improve your email marketing and all of these things. But WordPress doesn't do that. WordPress plugins don't do that. WordPress themes don't do that. We have like the, the page. Everybody knows the page as soon as they install like a, a freemium plugin. They have the page that's like, here are all the benefits that you can have from our pro add-on. How many of you go to those pages? Spend any time there? Look at them, read them? No, no, nobody. Because as soon as you install and plug in, I got the free thing. It does the thing that I need. That's it. I don't need any of those paid upgrades. WordPress is free. I don't need to pay for stuff. Go to GP, GPLDL for that, right? Anybody GPLDL? No. All right. GPLDL is a is a. Uh, uh, they they basically what they do is they go to all of the popular WordPress uh, WordPress premium plugin sites download them and they host them since they're all licensed under GPL, open license free user software. You can go download them for free uh, without having to pay for a license key. That exists. Don't do it. Pay the developers. They deserve it. <laughs> so next we're going to talk about why, you know, given that SaaS has come such a long way in providing an excellent user experience, Gutenberg was designed to provide the better user experience. Short codes are great. I love short codes. Everybody loves short codes. How many of you use short codes? One, so you get a short code, you get a short code. Um, but you know, in modern editors, if anybody uses anybody use click funnels, lead pages, few people, uh, those drag and drop page builders or, or thrive. Everybody uses thrive here, right? Thrive Architect. Yeah, get a hand for thrive. Those guys are great. Really good at what they do. <laughs> those That's when it returns. Just drag and drop the size. You put it in the mobile editing view. You just adjust the margins. Right? So, so easy. And yet, if, if, as soon as you install WordPress, you get you know, this WSIYG editor that's like, it's good. You know, it's like a Word document. That's awesome. But also in content building, you know, do, people don't have time to click the type in Word, preview, page load, back to tab, type in Word, p preview, page load, type in Word, right? It's pe people's attention spans for getting things done 
are, are, are so much less than they used to be. Like the modern attention span is like seven seconds. It's like if I have to, to, to adjust short codes like 30 times to get the spacing just right, it's like that's a pain in the ass, right? It's no fun. How many, how many of you prefer the, uh, the WordPress editor versus a uh, builder like Thrive Architect or Aveda or any of the front end preview? Does anybody here prefer the, the, the original WordPress editor to something else that they've already replaced it with? Nobody. Case in point. <laughs> Someone? You prefer the, all right, everybody give that guy a big hand. Last holdout. <laughs> What's your name? Mira. Mira? Miro for sure. Miro? All right, thank you, Miro. Uh, well, they have a classic editor plugin, so I'm sure they'll be installing that. So with that in mind and with, with you know, Gutenberg trying to address uh, a, a problem that is attention span, user experience, all these things, we have to ask ourselves, who is building websites? Who, who, who is actually, what is, who is building a website these days? Is it developers? Is it solopreneurs? Is it entrepreneurs? Can, can anybody tell me who is actually building a website these days? Hands, par, entrepreneurs? Pardon? Entrepreneurs? Every, everybody's building websites. Everybody. You don't even have to be a developer because it's so easy because you go to Shopify, you click, you, you sign up and you have a website immediately. It's on a subdomain. You can purchase an actual domain from them and they do everything for you. There's no DNS changes, you, automatic SSL. It's so easy with, with, with software as a service, right? And it's not developers who are building websites. It's mom and pop shops. It's entrepreneurs. And, and God knows they don't have time to learn all of this stuff. They're trying to run a business. It's content writers who all they want to do is they just want to, they just want to sell stuff. Uh, they want to sell their ideas. They want to sell their ideologies. They want to sell their news. They want to. Uh, what is the purpose of a website? Sell, sell stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. It's text. It's products. It's videos. It's courses. You know, purpose of a website to sell stuff. And who's selling stuff? It's not these guys. Like for sure. it's these guys. Right. So, and these people, this guy is running some sort of coffee shop. He's got banana bread, and I'm sure he doesn't sell that on his line because it's perishable. But he's trying to get people to come to his brand new coffee shop that he invested $50,000 in. And she's got some sort of clothing line selling socks, scarves, and she's working at the till because it's a one sole company. She doesn't have time to be spending, you know, changing short codes and tax rates on WooCommerce or WordPress or anything. So, and if, you, and if you are one of those people and you tried to build a WordPress website, the first time you did it probably looked a whole lot like that. <laughs> Raise your hand if your first WordPress website looked like that. Dreamweaver. <laughs> yeah, so when you try to do it yourself, it's like, is that, is that something that you want to show to your customers? No. It's probably, it's certainly not something that I would want to show to my customers. So what are they going to do? They don't got time, right? They're going to go to someone who tells them that they can take it care of them, right? Don't worry about it. Just upload your products, set your images, put in your prices. You're good. And you got a shop up and ready, or you got your, your blog up and ready. WordPress.com does this. They just do managed WordPress. You, saw, you write your article, and you're good, right? They don't got time. Who's got, everybody say, who's got the time for that? Who's got the time for that? Thank you. Which says brought me to say, WordPress has become the choice of the internet literate. The people who understand what DNS actually means, the people who know what sh you know that you have to close a short code after you open it, you know they know how to read HTML and JavaScript, while SAS is now the choice of everybody else. Because it's easy. <laughs> so what do we do? You know, how do we, how do we make WordPress not the solution for the internet, really, but WordPress the solution as it used to be, the solution for everyone. The, the democratized software as a service model, where it's open source, everybody contributes, and everybody gets a free ride. Which brings me to how do we flourish in the era of Gutenberg? Probably why most of you came here in the first place. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to start off with this. So if you have a website or you have a theme builder or you have a plugin, then the first thing you're going to have to do in order to make uh, any of those uh, flourish in the air of good work is uh, drop the refresh. Oh. Uh, everybody say, I love technology. 
All right, here we go. Drop the refresh. Um, if you use any of the modern uh, software building tools uh, or page builders, uh, you never have to refresh a page because if you're editing something on a mobile device or on a 3G connection, reloading the page takes for frickin' ever, yeah. right? If you're if you're scrolling on your phone or if you're on Facebook and you know you get to one of those pages like clicked to the next thing to read the next of the 24 stars that have children that you didn't know about, <laughs> right? Do you click it? No, I don't want to wait for that. I'm I'm using my data. I don't want to have to reload the page every time. So if you're building content or if you're uh, building a page builder or you're doing anything in the WordPress backend, drop the refresh. If you can do it with anything else, if uh, it's you know, your infinity scroll or anything, just do it. Don't reload the page because in the new world, everybody's on the 3G networks or the 4G or LTE or whatever. And as soon as you introduce page freeze, you lose people because it just takes for freaking ever to load, right? WordPress is going mobile. Matt Mullenweg has said just as much that WordPress is going to eventually be a mobile first editing experience. Right, so as soon as you you know you're you're on a trip to Florida and you're on the beach, right, and you know you find a typo and you're trying to edit something, limited refreshes as possible, minimum page loads. Number two, uh, label everything. Uh, I said earlier that WordPress is the choice of the internet literate, and that may be true. Uh, so to make it uh, the choice of everyone, that means you're, we're going to be dealing with people that are not so internet literate uh, in everything. So that means in order to cater to, to everybody, we've got to make sure that stuff is easy to find as possible. Nobody necessarily knows that in order to set up your plugin, you have to go to the settings page and configure it properly. You're going to have to tell them that they have to go to the settings page and configure everything. And every setting needs a label, and uh, every uh, button needs a hover over to explain what that button does, because people ain't got time to trial and error, right? Everybody's saying, oh, got time for that. All right, that was, that was OK. Remember when I said energy level 10? Right, we got we to gotta keep that. So let's try that again. Ain't nobody got time for that. Thank you. Much better. So label everything. If you're on your front end website, you know, if you've got a Facebook share button, you've got to point 10 arrows to your share button and says share this. Right? If, if you've got a small Facebook share button in the bottom right hand corner of your website, does anybody see it? Nope. nope prob probably not. Chances are not. So label everything. Number two, uh, and this kind of ties into your page refreshes. If it takes more than two clicks to find something, it's too hard to find, right? Everything on your website, whether it's on the front end or on the back end, needs to be found or be findable in two clicks or less, preferably less. Uh, again, tying into ain't nobody got time to reload the page like 60 different times in order to find their account or their cart or, or whatever. Everything should be done within two clicks or less. So that means if I'm going to go find a post, I need to click blog and be able to click to the post. If I'm looking for the shopping cart, it needs to be a direct link from the menu. Uh, if I need to go to the settings page, it should be the hover over icon in the left admin bar. Anything should be done in two clicks or less. And even better, if you can just load content on top of more content without refreshing the page at all, better. That's what Facebook has started to do. You click an ad, it just opens an ad in a pop-up. They're beta testing that. Has anybody seen that at all? Yeah, it's really cool. So instead of taking you outside of Facebook, they just keep you in, in Facebook, put the ad in an iframe, and then you've never left. And that offers a way better user experience, at least for Facebook users, maybe not for the, so much for the advertiser. But as far as Facebook is concerned, that's great. That's awesome. So if you can start doing that in your WordPress content as well, front end or back end, uh, then you're going to see a lot of people being able to better use your site and better consume your content. Um, I don't remember what that one was. <laughs> Drag and drop. Uh, this is mostly probably for, for the developers in the room. Uh, but everything is moving towards drag and drop. Uh, Gutenberg is almost drag and drop, um, but it's, it's, it's basically close enough. Uh, just dra dragging, dragging, dropping things, and providing a front end visual experience. I, I want to be able to see what I'm getting. WSIYG. I hope I'm saying that in the right order. Prop Wizzy. All right, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, is you know not necessarily true because what you see is technically not what you get in WordPress. Uh, as soon as you start introducing themes and short codes, it's like, well, that's, this, this doesn't match up. So providing that front-end visual experience in a drag-and-drop kind of implementation way 
is extremely beneficial. And if you look at any of the major competitors to WordPress, at least in the content creation space, it's all this. And people love it, and it's easy to understand. So last thing is, or uh, not the last thing, but close enough, is it's got to make common sense, right? If something doesn't make common sense, then some people aren't going to understand it. And what does that mean? It means that if I need to change an option, the option needs to be in the settings page, right? Because that's where options go. If uh, I need to edit page content, then I need to go to the page where that content is supposed to be, not in you know, the, the form editor. I should be able to edit the form where it's supposed to be on the page, because that's where it is. Right? So everything needs to be tied in to something that makes sense to the end user. Right? Because they're, if they install you know, your plugin on a whim, they're not necessarily going to know that you have to go to the fourth tab on the last setting in the section where it says miscellaneous in order to understand that they have to change that option in order to get it to actually show on the front end if you're not an administrator user. Right? It's got to make common sense. I need to go, if, if I'm thinking as an internet non-illiterate, where is that supposed to be? Where is the most likely place that that's supposed to be? And I'm going to go there. And if it's not there, I give up on to the next plugin. Or I give up on WordPress entirely. I'm going to go to Shopify. Since they said they'll just take care of it for me, they have 24-hour customer support. I'm going to do that. Right? So as, as long as it makes common sense uh, on the front end and on the back end, then you're OK. If this, for, to apply this to a content uh, creator standpoint, uh, if you have, you know, menus within menus within menus within menus, trying to lead people to the correct place, that's what we call out of context. Now, you've got to put everything in context on the front of your site in order for it to make common sense. So if they come to your home page, you give them two buttons of where the most relevant places that your services or products go. And then as soon as they click that button, they get to where they're supposed to be. Right? They're not going to go spend 30 seconds you know, browsing through seven different menu items in order to get what they want. As soon as if they don't find it immediately, they're out of there. They're gone. So make sure that your layout on the front end makes common sense. If, it, it, if you show it to your best friend and they say, I don't get it, believe your best friend. <laughs> right? You may, you know, they, they may not understand how WordPress works, or they may not be a developer, or you, know, you might think that they're totally out of their wit's end. But if they say that doesn't make sense, then you got to take their word for it, because we're trying to make WordPress the solution for everybody. And your best friend is included in everybody. We got to respect the user. Um, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> provide quality support. <laughs> if you don't provide quality support uh, for either your theme builder or your plugin or whatever product or service you provide, then that's a no-go, man. One of the first things at least I look for when I'm purchasing products is that there's a reliable support team that I can count on to go if I have a problem. Because if there's no reliable support team and you have a problem, then what are you going to do? You're, you're out you know, your fee of whatever you paid, and then you got to you know, ask for a refund. And then, of course, there's no support team, so you never get that refund. So you request a chargeback, you lose. And it's just all a big mess. So make sure that you're providing quality support. If you're a content editor, have a live chat button. Because people have questions. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but nobody leaves WordPress comments anymore, unless you're looking at WP Tavern, mm -hmm. in which case there's too many. Yeah. But nobody leaves comments on blogs anymore. I haven't received a comment in for freaking ever. Maybe that's just my fault, and I just don't know how to get comments. Mm -hmm. But people are way more keen to get an instant response than they are to receive a mail notification about a week later uh, that you replied to their comment that they no longer care about. <laughs> They've already forgotten about they left a comment there. When was the last time you left a comment? Do you even remember? Yes. He remembers, but he still uses the regular editor. So, <laughs> so provide premium support. Make sure that you're listening to the users. Make sure that, oh, I remember what that meant. Doesn't matter. We're past it. <laughs> Make sure that, that you're listening to the users, that you're answering their questions, you're, you're respecting their, their, their intentions, and that they want to support you as much as you want to support them. They're all for giving you money and, and, and giving you credibility and giving you reviews as long as you provide a seller service. If you provide a seller service, then that's all they want. They, they just want stellar service. 
So if you provide it to them, then they're great. And you're never going to receive a chargeback or a refund request or any of those things. Unless they hate you. Um, probably the least favorite for everybody's. Um, and probably one of the hardest to implement, at least in the WordPress admin area, is uh, stuff's got to look pretty these days. If you ever look at any of those SaaS programs or software as a service, then it's got to look, it's got to look beautiful. I showed you the, the Shopify and uh, the WooCommerce one, and one of those was categorically, without a question, more pretty to look at than the other. And it wasn't WooCommerce. Although it's coming, they say. So if you're implementing a theme builder, uh, and if you use Thrive Architect, which many of you do, it's, it's pretty good looking. It's a little bit convoluted. And they could definitely, should be in this presentation to learn that it's got to make common sense. Uh, their new options panel is just crazy to navigate. But stuff's got to look good. And it, that, that ties into the common sense bit of it as well. Because if stuff looks good, then it's easy to look at. It's easy to read. Uh, and then they can better navigate your uh, planned user experience, as it were. So uh, if you're on a WordPress blog, if you're a content editor, then aesthetic directly ties to credibility. Um, there are, if you're a content editor, nine times out of 10, someone is navigating there from Facebook. Now, Facebook, the Facebook mobile experience and the Facebook desktop experience are extremely similar in that they're both you know, easy on the eyes. Right? And, and so if they're traveling from uh, point A to point B, then you necessarily have to extend the look and feel of where they come from to make them feel OK with staying where they are. So if you have a landing page that's coming from Facebook or a blog post that's coming from Facebook, I'm not going to go as far as to say it should look exactly like Facebook, but it should be like navigating Facebook. And that way, they feel as if, uh, or psychologically, they never left. Right? So if you have a content editing experience uh, from the front end, make it look like where they're coming from. Aesthetically pleasing, easy to navigate. And if you have a WordPress developer experience, then a lot of the people that are using WordPress use WordPress. They don't use uh, uh, any other different kind of content management system. They use something called WordPress if they're in the WordPress admin. So a lot of the form, recent form builders out there that, that have come out in, in recent time, uh, such as uh, WP Forms or Forminator from the WPM dev team, uh, as soon as you go into their form editing experience, it's like, whoa, where the hell am I? This ain't WordPress anymore. I'm, I'm certainly not in Kansas, right? Which is confusing to a lot of people. Now, they have a lot of great reviews and stuff, so I'm not going to go too harsh on that because obviously it works. Uh, but to get you know, people feeling comfortable in your uh, WordPress plugin, it's got to look like WordPress. Don't totally change the gambit on them and, and totally change the user experience from regular WordPress, because that's something that they understand. You'll get much better results in usability and reviews if it looks like something that they're used to. Right? So, don't, so don't change the H1 tags and the font types and, and the colors and all that stuff. Leave, leave it looking that the way that it, WordPress was intended to look so that adoption is easier. As soon as you have you know, like 20,000 users, you can do whatever the hell you want. At that point, you're too big to fail. But keep it, keep it simple. Make, make it sure that the editing experience looks like what they're used to. OK. Uh, I don't remember. I should, I should, I, I honestly, I should have put like a little tag or like a note here. Didn't do that. Points for next time. Uh, this is something that a, a few WordPress plugins do, and whenever they do it, it's awesome and great. Uh, a lot of plugins don't do that, and it sucks, and it's hard, and you have to go search for answers. And that is the welcome page. So as soon as you install uh, WooCommerce and you click that activation plugin, it brings you to uh, a guided setup or a welcome page, which tells you, all right, here's how things work. This is what's up. Uh, this is what you're going to need to do in order to be successful with this plugin. If you install Storefront, which is their official WooCommerce theme, same thing, brings you to the Storefront homepage, edit your settings. This is what you've got to do. Step one, step two, step three, all good. right? Uh, I prefer an e-commerce solution called Easy Digital Downloads. Any Easy Digital Downloads users in here? To that. Easy digital downloads. It is easy digital downloads. Digital. digital. Did anybody not get that like her? Everybody. Okay, great. Um, 
So they don't provide a welcome page experience. And I can tell you, it was a job and a half. I was dedicated to using this platform because I sell WordPress plugins. Um, but it was a job and a half to get this thing configured and understand what it meant. It's a developer platform, but I certainly, you know, as, as you know, a former internet illiterate, then it would have been really, really, really nice to, to have someone coaxing me along the way saying, all right, this is step one, this is step three, this is step three. And it just would have been really nice. And I was this close to just switching to uh, WooCommerce and using one of their, you know, add-on plugin subscription options for that instead. I eventually figured it out, though, and uh, highly recommend them. They need a welcome page, though. So if you have a complex theme, right? you got theme options out the wazoo, and you got this short code experience, and you got tutorials, welcome page. Tutorials in one section, add-ons in the other, getting started steps in the top. Right? That's all you need. It's going to take you two seconds to build. You just code it out in HTML, and you're good to go. Just upload it, add it to the plugin or the theme, and that's it. And you are going to get such a better um, churn rate. Uh, does everyone know what churn means? All right, for those of you who don't know what churn means, uh, churn is when you get a new user, and within three months, they abandon, go on to the next. Uh, a lot of SaaS companies have problems with churn because they don't provide an awesome welcome experience. Uh, so you got to make sure that you know, in order to retain, getting active installations is all great. It's only great if they remain active. So in order to keep people actively using your plugin, give them the welcome page experience, tell them what they need to do, you know, make sure that whatever it is that they need to do, they can do it in less than five minutes, uh, and then you're golden. Last thing is guided setup. So if you provide guided setup, then you're immediately better than 99.9% .9 of WordPress plugins out there. Uh, guided setup can come in many forms. You can come in the WooCommerce experience, where it's step by step. You set your settings, and those will populate the settings page. Uh, it can be in the form of a guide hosted on your website, where as soon as they install the plugin, you just say, "Go here to, you know, watch your guided setup," and just walk them through a video. Most people have two screens now. You got screen one, you got screen two. They got the video on this screen, they got the website on this screen, and they just follow along. Uh, providing guided setup to your theme plugin or whatever is really great. Uh, content editors, uh, guided setup is also applicable uh, because if you have someone new come to your site and they, they haven't necessarily realized you know, what kind of content that is you're trying to, to, to push onto them, uh, providing a video that says, hey, this is what this is all about and what you need to do in order to get the most out of our content would be probably a very, very good idea. Maybe not necessarily a video, but a guide that says, hey, listen, if you subscribe to our list, these are the things that are going to happen, and these are what you can do in order to, to react to the things that we're going to do in order to make your experience with us the best one possible. Statistics. Uh, so statistics, big part of uh, developing websites these days. Everybody, every single website is only trying to sell something, whether it's a product, service, or whatever. We need statistics in order to be able to better realize what our website is good at and what it is not good at. Stuff like active visitors, uh, sales, uh, added to cart, but abandoned rates, stuff like that, or as far as e-commerce is concerned. But providing a statistics view for if your plugin is relevant to that uh, is always a plus, at least to the end user, so they can uh, absorb the information uh, relatively quickly and provide uh, a service or an update to their website to better act on that. Uh, there are plugins that allow you to do this. Um, so if you are a website owner or a content distributor, uh, what I'd recommend is you uh, write this down. Type in clicky.com. Uh, clicky.com is an analytics uh, plugin. It's super cheap for what you get out of it. Uh, you get these things called heat maps. Does everybody know what a heat map is? A few people don't. So a heat map is when uh, you get an overlay of a web page, uh, which is super cool. And it'll show you uh, circles of where people click. Uh, and the brighter the circle, the more people clicked on that area with a, within a certain time frame. So you can check like the last seven days, the last 24 days, the last 30 days. Uh, so you can see where people are actually interacting with your site. Uh, really, a uh, wake-up call for me one time was I threw up the heat map on a landing page we are sending traffic to, and a bunch of people were clicking on this red text that they thought was a button. Guess what? It wasn't a button. <laughs> so a lot of people were clicking there. It's like, why isn't it working? Uh, so we replaced it with a button that actually did something, and all of a sudden, opt-in rates went up. 
right? So uh, get, get Clicky or, or any uh, comparable analytics tool in order to better serve your front end customers. Uh, because if they're clicking on places that they're not supposed to be clicking on, uh, then you either make it clickable or make it less noticeable. And that way, you can guide them to the place where they're actually supposed to go in the first place. Okay, so analytics tools like those can certainly help you optimize your front end. Uh, statistics for back end developers, providing statistics, a coding in a way in order to be able to provide useful data about the things that your plugin is doing, uh, or uh, and you have to be careful of this because this is technically in the WordPress terms of service for plugin users, is you have an opt-in availability. So you have to make your statistics collecting service, so receiving data from your users in order to make a better plugin or a better theme user, has to be an opt-in service if it's hosted in the WordPress.org repository. Okay? So if you're collecting data from your users through, uh, there's, there's one off the top of my head, it's called Freemius. If you're a developer, write that down. And it provides, uh, collection stats. It has to be opt-in, though. So they, you can't just collect it off the bat. That is against WordPress work Terms of Service. Wow, everybody say that was a lot of content. <laughs> that was a lot of me talking really, really fast and you trying really, really hard to understand. Um, so, but what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of an exercise. And don't worry, it's not going to be as physical as that. Um, Everybody take the next uh, three minutes and think about what it is your service, your website, uh, your plugin, and think immediately where you could eliminate or provide a better user experience. Okay, and then uh, we're going to take the next three minutes to do that, and we're going to hear what some of you have come up with, uh, and you're more than welcome to, to shamelessly put in a plug for whatever it is that you do. All right, sound good? Everybody, get us, everybody say, that sounds great, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, three minutes starting now. What are we going to fix? <laughs> <laughs> Feel more than welcome to work with the person next to you. It's not a test. Either or, your choice. So the, the question is, did anybody not hear the question? No? You didn't hear the question either? Perfect. All right. So the this question. Guy, this guy was yakking too much. So, <laughs> was, I couldn't quite see. Okay. so. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who uh, product to service, uh, if you're a developer, then you can do it all based on your plugin. If you're a content distributor, you can do it based on your website. Uh, think of a way immediately, given the points that we just discussed, you know, page refreshes, content loading, uh, aesthetically pleasing, reporting, that you could use to improve your product and service and provide a better user experience. Make sense? We good? Good. You have two minutes. Oh, you're great? Awesome. You got, you got some good points? I came here for one purpose, so I already know the answer to that. You already know the answer? I have my answer. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, we're going to be talking to you first then. <laughs> Needs is like music. We need like Jeopardy music. Na, 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 na. There's so many changes right now. It's hard to... Technology is moving at an increasing rate. That is for sure. All for the better, though. Yes. All for the better. It's just a learning curve time. Everybody's saying nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody raise if you need more time. You need more time? All right, you have an extra minute, and then we're going to take some answers.
So, did we change it up? Did I go to do it up? Yeah. Yeah? It's good. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, great. <laughs> Yeah. At least if it's building Gutenberg instead of HTML, you know, it's something that the client can probably get a piece of it and actually edit if they need to. Exactly, because if it's a short code builder, they don't they don't know what's going on. Like like Beaver Builder, Thrive Architect, all that stuff. It's like they don't know. We provide training for our clients, even for the ones with bigger websites. Yeah. In one ear or the other. No, it doesn't stick. Yeah. If ever, yep. and then a month or two down the line, they're like, "How do I do this?" And it's like the simplest thing. Once you drives me nuts yeah. every time. That's I mean, why I got out of that I, business, though. I understand entirely <laughs> why they don't retain it because it's like taxes. You know, yeah. Even once a year, and no one remembers that. Yeah. Do them. All right, hold that thought. All right, stop. Thank you. All right, uh, let's take. Uh, you know, let's let's hear what some of you have thought of about how you can greatly improve your user experience for the benefit of uh, the entire world in the WordPress community. Uh, raise your hand if you'd like to share. Great, thank you. What's your name? Nicholas. All right, stand up, Nicholas, and tell everybody what you would do. Thank you. Uh, what I would do is I would have a more appealing visual design, better, write, better writing, higher readability, faster page loads. All right, great. So W3T, uh, W3Cache uh, plugin for faster page loads. Uh, if you can eliminate page load altogether, uh, that would be preferable. Uh, better design, uh, theme builder of choice. Uh, and what was your other one? Uh, better writing, higher, well, easier, more readability, more readable. More readable, bigger font size. <laughs> Everybody say thank you. Thank you. All right. Who else would like to share? Please stand. Tell us your name. What, what's, what's your plugin? This is my Todd Sauce I make. That's what I make. And my website's called Writing the Six. The, what, my purpose of coming here today was because my blog is my branding, so people get to know who's behind the hot sauce before I actually become the hot sauce person. Mm -hmm. My takeaway from you today was about creating the user experience because I'm changing over so that when you go to the website, uh, you find the hot sauce first because I'm realizing if you go there and find the blog first, if you're looking for hot sauce, you'll be discouraged by seeing the blog and not seeing the hot sauce. If Makes sense. The hot sauce, yeah. And then if you go there for the blog and then you find the hot sauce, it's okay. So I'm going to change the user experience by making it so that when you get to my page, it takes you to the hot sauce. If you've done some, something with the blog, it takes you to the hot sauce. If you've done something with the hot sauce, it takes you back to the blog. Perfect. So everybody give her a big hand. That's, that, that is a eureka moment. Yeah. All right, who else wants to follow that up? All right, we got one. I work with this guy, full disclosure. I just took on a, a client called Kenworth. Does anybody know Kenworth Truck? Yeah, it's a whole, most, an unbelievably not a great website, and it's a huge company. And they do two things. They sell trucks, and they sell truck parts. So as you were talking, I thought, on the prime real estate, whether it's mobile or, or desktop, I have two buttons. One, check out our trucks, and two, That's a great idea. So home page, come to the button. They got two buttons. They're either there for one of two reasons. They either need a truck or they need a truck part. Uh, direct them to the area of choice. You know, If they got multi-site or whatever, then take them to the appropriate multi-site for whatever e-commerce uh, portion of the plugin that they have in there. Uh, so if you sell two products and services, like your blog versus um, hot sauce, uh, you know, they could be there or could be there for either one of two reasons. Uh, direct them to the most appropriate page in the least amount of clicks possible just by giving them a simple two buttons in that you know, massive overlay sliding header that you really need to get rid of because that's so 2007. Um, and making sure that they have the easiest way of finding what it is they need. All right, who else would like to share? We got one in the back there. What's your name, please? William. William. It's a lot of visits. People looking for condo information when in crisis. 
<laughs> Condo information when in crisis. That is to say they're being attacked by the board, the mm. fees went up 18%, there's Oof. some crisis in the building, things aren't going right, otherwise they just fall asleep and pay their fees and don't care. So the only time they wake up is when there's a crisis. So my concept, which I struggle with, is that I would like to monetize that because we give away all that advice now. Mm -hmm. We get data, we get insights into things going on, we see the politics of the industry, we understand who's crooks, who's not crooks. We get intel, which is valuable yeah. for our other work in fraud examination. But we, what we don't do is monetize those people who are in crisis and presumably motivated to pay what I would colloquially, colloquially call a membership or a support hand-holding, some kind of thing that says, join us. That brings up a whole set of issues, which include terms of service, performance, etc. But the idea of a membership-driven or subscription-driven or back-end-driven multi-tier membership I would leave any, anything that has multi-tier in it immediately sounds like a pyramid scheme. Uh, <laughs> but uh, would anybody like the opportunity to answer that question? You, you. I would just say, how does that help the user? If it helps you, how does it help them? Well, they, they either get referrals to professional services or ancillary services that can help them in their crisis, help organize their building, political insights. There's also other resources we control. Uh, thousands of pages of material uh, that empowers people. So they get empowerment and knowledge, which is really what it's all about at the end. We can't do the work. Empowerment is knowledge. Clarity is power. We have, we have a suggestion. Uh, let's take uh, Nick first yes. and then... I was going to say, just have, get some lawyers to put some ads on your page. Well, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of crook lawyers, so that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Still, you can filter them. Yeah, we give referrals to the good lawyers. Yeah, so yeah. have them pay for it. No, that's not a, that doesn't work because they, they, they establish their relationship directly, but I appreciate the idea. Yeah. Adrian, talk about Charles Fournier. Uh, so uh, Charles Fournier uh, is a self-taught uh, day trader. Uh, he has a very conservative and long-term investment strategy that he used to post publicly about his wins, his losses, his dividend earnings, and all of that stuff on a blog that he published for free, and he gained about 2,000 followers, uh, subscribers to his website, uh, users, and he came to us and asked us to monetize that. Uh, through, we threw up a WP member on his site. Uh, we gave them two subscription options. They could pay monthly or they could pay yearly. Uh, people don't understand multi-tier, add-on, stuff like that. Make it simple. Keep it easy. One price, you get, you get a discounted price you pay yearly, you get, you get a monthly price, right? Those, those are your two options, uh, and th that's what works the best. And then everything else is a, is a one-time fee. Don't add in subscriptions and upgrades and all that stuff. That just get, that's, it gets complicated, not only for you to manage, but them to understand. So keep it simple. Uh, pat protect pages, so easiest way in order to get those people is they read half a blog post or they read half of an article. They get to the bottom, it's blurred out, it says, hey, you want to read the rest of this? You know, it's going to cost you whatever, 14-day free trial. That's yeah. so all you got to do. They're going to read their article, and they're either going to realize that this is the greatest thing to slice cheese, or they're going to cancel within the 14 days. Either way, you're not really out. Mm -hmm. You know? It doesn't cost you anything to provide free content for 14 days. And if they decide to leave, then you're not out any money. If they de can't decide to cancel after the first billing period, you're not out any money. You're not adding any money at any of those periods. So it's a really smart strategy to just give them a, 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 a very simple, and I'm supposed to wrap this up. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Everybody give them a big hand. I'm done. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Everybody have a great day.